Good God. I do not even know where to begin with this video. I am literally way too excited to talk about this. Monster Hunter Rise, the latest entry in the Monster Hunter franchise, just had a demo that released last week. And for the first time, many of us got to hop in and experience Rise ourselves. With most of the quality of life changes intact from Capcom's best-selling Monster Hunter game to date, Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter World Iceborne, MH Rise players were just in for an amazing experience. And I mean an amazing experience with, of course, some added flair, as the Monster Hunter franchise likes to do between each game. As a Monster Hunter fan who got introduced into the franchise through Monster Hunter Tri, I've watched this game grow into the cultural video game icon that it is today. And since then, not only have I played every game that came out after that, but I even had the opportunity to go back and play the past titles of the Monster Hunter series as well. So, does Monster Hunter Rise live up to the hype? Well... Let's talk about it. Hello ladies and gentlemen and all the core gamers out there, CAJ Man and 777 here today to bring you yet another video. And today I'm going to be talking about my experience with the Monster Hunter Rise demo. I'm going to be giving not only my thoughts and impressions on the demo, but I'm also going to be talking about what I liked and what I didn't like in the demo as well. All the while, I'm going to be playing some background footage of some of my solo hunts in the demo, so uh, sit back and enjoy the show. However, as per usual, before we get started, if you want to see more of this content on the channel, do me a favor, you know what you gotta do, hit that like button, as well as hitting that subscribe button to help, hopefully help this channel reach 5,000 subscribers by the end of 2021, because that is the goal. But, with that out of the way, let's get right in. From the very first trailer, when Monster Hunter Rise was introduced, the game had me hooked immediately. The game itself not only looked incredible, the monster designs were amazing, and they took that new world Monster Hunter approach, and the mechanics they showed off were just absolutely jaw-dropping in that first trailer. Trailer after trailer, Monster Hunter Rise continued to impress me with all the changes, and all of a sudden, literally last week, directly when they dropped the new trailer, when they had a direct of the new trailer, they dropped the demo, and I absolutely lost it. So many of us were finally going to be able to experience what Monster Hunter Rise had in store for us, and let me tell you, I was not disappointed. I booted up the demo right away, and I was met with that oh-so-nostalgic new rendition of the Monster Hunter theme, specifically designed uh, around the whole uh, village of Monster Hunter Rise and stuff, and I think many of us just had chills going down our spine listening to it. And what was crazy is that was just the title screen! Like, actually getting to play it? was something else entirely. The Monster Hunter Rise demo felt incredibly smooth, just right from the start. It, without a doubt, is definitely one of, if not the best looking game on the Switch so far. Unlike the other handheld Monster Hunter titles, the Switch was designed to handle all this amazing capability, and it's all thanks to the, all thanks to the fact that this game also runs on the RE engine, also known as the Resident Evil engine, and it's... Just, I mean, that's just incredible. The animations of the new weapon classes, uh, or well, I should say not of the new weapon classes, but of all the weapon classes, were kind of revamped and more fluid than they ever were before, and they were extremely well done. The rendering of objects, even for Switch standards, were great, and the movement overall, oh god, the movement is in this game, in Rise, is just god tier. And obviously, uh, with Monster Hunter Rise... As many people know, they kind of introduced a, a new mechanic called the wire bug, which functions similarly to everybody's, uh, n uh, the thing that a lot of people know about, the clutch claw and iceborne. But rather than just being able to be used on the monsters like the, the clutch claw was, the wire bug in Monster Hunter Rise could be used to pretty much scale everything in the game. And I mean everything in the game. The reason the game is called Monster Hunter Rise is because the title of Rise actually came about because the developers of Monster Hunter Rise wanted the players to feel as free as they could while scaling these vast interconnected environments at their own pace. And the wire bug, honestly, it allowed us to do exactly that. You were able to free run on walls, leap over massive gaps, use the wire bug to climb to new heights and reach secret areas, and some breathtaking areas at that as well. I know we only got the one area in the demo, but I've never felt so free in my movement and the wire bug also kind of plays a little bit into into combat as well and let me just tell you it just plain feels fantastic never before have any monster hunter players felt this free in terms of movement 
And uh, honestly, I think I think this is probably one of the best changes they've ever made to the franchise. Now, as I said, granted, in the demo, we only had the Shrine Ruins to explore, but we've seen glimpses and massive zones of some of the other areas in the game already from the returning area from Monster Hunter Tri, the revamped Flooded Forest, which is going to be awesome, to this amazing new ice area. Uh, I forget the name. I forget the name. It just dropped in the trailer, but that, that ice area looks really cool. Um... I mean, we've seen glimpses of these zones before and, of course, of some of these other areas in the game. And I'm very excited to use the wire bug to traverse these areas, as well as seeing what other areas they come out with. Uh, I can't wait to see if we're getting a desert and a volcano. Usually we do, um, so I'm keeping my eyes peeled for that. The really amazing part about all of it is, though, is that the wire bug... It, through movement, through combat, through anything, it always feels like it's part of the hunter. Whether it's in battle, which I'll talk about in a little bit, or even for just exploring. And honestly, I think the wire bug is what the clutch claw... The, like, the wire bug covers for what the clutch claw's weaknesses were. It, it just... The clutch claw to me in World, and granted, I loved World and Iceborne, um, but... For me, the Clutch Claw felt tacked on. It felt like a tacked on mechanic to adding damage and softening potential to the monster. But with the Wire Bug, it, it doesn't feel like that. It's integrated directly into the moveset. So combat, like I said, combat feels faster and everything. It's just, it's absolutely fantastic. Not to mention, in terms of being able to move faster, we also get to ride a dog? Hello? The pa yes, the Palamute, the new Monster Hunter, War the new Monster Hunter Rise companion. It's just a much better version of the small monster riding we had in World, and being able to not only freely control the Palamute and move at various speeds, it just. It just feels like, again, it was just meant to be there. Your Palamute buddies can also help you in combat against the monsters too, which makes them all the more useful, and without a doubt, they are absolutely adorable. The, and, I, and I love them. It looks so cute. But, I mean, this game, in terms of how it's handled movement for, for everything, I, I think this I think Monster Hunter Rise has the best movement uh, feel in the series so far. And it even, like I said, and it even feels great in combat. As I already stated, the wire bug in Rise is used for pretty much everything. And as I literally just said, they're also used extensively in your combat repertoire, making them an integral part of Monster Hunter Rise. Unlike previous uh, version, uh, previous Monster Hunter titles, specifically of uh, ones that people might be familiar with, MHX, known as Monster Hunter Generations in the West, and MH Double Cross, also known as gener um, basically Generations Ultimate in the West, the Wire Bugs gave our hunters essentially, um, I guess, kind of. They, they kind of act as, as the hunting arts in that game, which were basically unique uh, ultimate abilities that you could use at free will. The major difference, though, between the hunting arts and the wirebugs is that the wirebugs recharge on their own timer and passively, rather than the players themselves in uh, generations, having to charge a gauge to use the move just a single time. And I personally think this is a great addition because it makes combat more active, it makes combat more fluent. Players aren't having to wait to use this uber-powerful uber move one time. They can pretty much use it whenever they want, provided they have not only the wire bug charges, but a good opening to use it. Because, granted, the wire bug moves, they are very cool, but some of them do leave you with an opening. As many of us know, though, the wire bug attacks, um, were able to leap into the air and were able to, like, jump off the monsters and stuff, but the wire bug on its own can just be used to leap into the air and drop bombs from the sky. Yes, you heard that right. Large barrel bombs can be thrown from the sky. On top of that, the wire bugs can also hold ourselves above the monster to potentially dodge attacks. Or even use a new mechanic that's after you get hit. And the new mechanic known as the wirefall allows you to dodge away after getting knocked back provided you have a wire bug charge. It throws us away from an oncoming attack or you can use it as a counter blow to jump straight back into the fight. The wire bugs, honestly, are just some amazing tools, and because of this fluidity, the hunting feels smoother, faster, and less repetitive. On top of that, we got a new mounting mechanic that lets us control the monsters and use their abilities to attack other monsters, inflicting them with status and elemental blights. Which, by the way, inflicting monsters with elemental blights is a brand new thing that was specifically added for Rise. This is far and away my favorite Monster Hunter game so far, and it's not even out yet. I want I want everybody to keep that in mind. This is my experience from the demo. But of course, like all Monster Hunter games, 
the where the game really shines is in the weapons, armor, and combat feel with these weapons. And damn, did that blow me away too. First things first, in Monster Hunter Rise, once again, we're finally getting unique weapon designs for all weapons again. Meaning that each weapon in its respective class will have a different design depending on the monster it comes from. Firstly, thank you for this. I know a major complaint of old and new hunters back in Monster Hunter World and Iceborne was the fact that the weapon designs for the most part were just slapped on fur scales on an iron or bone weapon and, it's just, and they just said, here, it's a new design. No. It's not okay. So, I'm very glad to have unique weapon designs back from the ones we got in, obviously from the ones we got in the demo. It's very clear that this is going to be uh, that that approach as well. Same with the armor. While yes, the world, uh, the armor designs in world for the most part were unique for all armor sets related to the monster. To me, they lacked a bit of color to match world's more realistic approach. And don't even get me started on the movie armor. And don't even get me started on the Monster Hunter movie armor and the Monster Hunter movie weapons because I will fight you. But it's I will say it's good to see that this time around armor sets in uh, the armor sets and the world. Uh, in general, the, it, and the weapons themselves, it just feels like the game has more color pushed back into it as well, rather than re this realistic and gritty thing. And I'm not knocking on World's art style, but I feel like there was definitely a a little bit of a lack of color. Granted, the environments were beautiful, but there was definitely a little bit of lack of color. Although, I'm kind of getting a little off topic here, but uh, like every Monster Hunter game I've played... Uh, each title, each specific Monster Hunter title, I've kind of gravitated toward trying out different weapons uh, for each title. When I started in Monster Hunter Try and Try Ultimate, the weapon classes I used most often were Lance, Switch Axe, and Gun Lance. Uh, whereas when I played Monster Hunter 4, I played with the Insect Live and Charge Blade, which were two new additions uh, into that generation. So what I like to do for every Monster Hunter game is I like to keep my knowledge of weapons vast, so I can basically play anything in Rise, and of course... Uh, with Rise, this is going to be no different. Monster Hunter Rise has some wonderful additions of the MH World and MH Iceborne sets um, in implemented into the Rise weapon movesets, which already greatly improved how the weapons felt. And due to this, in the Rise demo, I've kind of been drawn more to three separate weapons in particular this time uh, that kind of have, have adapted their world movesets and made them more unique for Rise. And before you ask... Yes, I am actually going to try and avoid the, my Weeby Longsword Swish Swish Counter Strat. But, the three weapons that I were most drawn to specifically in the MH Rise demo so far, the Light Bowgun, the Sword and Shield, and I decided to bring back my Switch Axe from Monster Hunter Try. Now, while I have really enjoyed using the revamped Hunting Horn, my friend Krev, who is already our Hunting Horn main in the party, um... I don't want to steal his thunder, so I'm going to let him keep his job. But honestly, the uh, with how all the new weapons feel, I have tried to test all the weapons out. And granted, I almost wanted to pick up Lance again. But all the weapons in, in Rise, I feel like they, they really did get great quality of life changes on top of that World and Iceborne moveset um, to match the enhanced movement of this title. But for now, I'm just going to be focusing on the three weapons I use the most. So let me start with the Light Bowgun. The first thing I felt with the Light Bowgun was an insane sense of movement. Now, with Light Bowgun having its world moves, I was pretty familiar with it. Uh, I was pretty familiar with it already, as I had used it during the Monster Hunter World Beta, where this move set was actually first introduced. I just loved the feel of the Light Bowgun. It's fast. It's quick shooting. You have a lot of mobility with it, and it's something that uh, I think it, it just feels a lot better because prior to the world move set. Uh, Bowgun users did not have the ability to move and shoot on the go, which made Bowguns just, they just felt extremely clunky in the older titles. But in Rise, this enhanced moveset just feels fantastic, with, especially with the addition of the wire bug. The UI changes on the ammo display is also, I think, a really good thing on the light bowgun. It tells, it tells players which ammo can be reloaded while moving, which ammo could be rapid fired, and even the addition of cluster bombs. Yes, they gave the light bowgun cluster bombs. I mean, that's just a, that, that's a scary addition. And apparently, there's actually also elemental pierce ammo, but neither bowguns in the demo have this new elemental pierce ammo, so I'm excited to see how that'll work as well. 
Uh, in terms of the movement, the light bow gun still has its dual slides after shooting, although the timing on this has been altered. And of course, it's detonation mines, which can be put into the ground or even into the monster, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but when I started playing the light bow gun in the Rise demo, for whatever reason, I couldn't figure out how to do the wire bug attacks. Well, it turns out, um, because the, if many of you don't know, the standard wire bug attacks are linked to ZL or exit, ZL plus X or ZL plus A for most weapons, but, uh, being a bow gun or bow user, you understand that pulling up ZL kind of brings up your aiming reticle. Um, so where was the wire bug move set? Well, I quickly found out that the wire bug move specifically on these weapons is directly related to the R button now with X and A. And after I figured this out, the light bow gun quickly became, uh, one of my favorites. It's first wire bug move, uh, as is known as a silk bind glide. It launches your hunter in the desired direction with a long distance slide, which can be combined with the dot, uh, which can be combined with the dodge shot slides. Uh, the light bow gun already has, making LBG users extremely mobile um, as well. But at the tip of this attack, you can actually fire off a blast of ammo if you so choose, making this a great option to move in and hit the monster with a very powerful blast for light bow gun. It, um, on some of these damage hits I, I saw, and it was hitting for like, oh god, it was hitting for like 100, 200 damage, which on, uh, for a demo light bow gun, I mean, that's a lot of damage, especially on a light bow gun. Of course, the other wire bug move uh, launched our hunter into the air with light bow gun. Uh, and you, not only that, but you were able to drop a mine, uh, one of those detonation mines, or fire off some ammo in rapid succession. Though, in order to do that, you actually had to aim while in midair and shoot downwards, which can be a bit clunky at times. But now, uh, I love the glide, right? I absolutely love the glide. I think the move is crazy. Um, I, I think the glide was crazy, but I find the launch with the light bow gun into the air, I find this move just absolutely insane. Because while you are in this midair state, if you press X and A and you shoot a detonation mine, if it hits the monster, it sticks to that monster part, allowing you to not only dodge attacks during the wire bug move if you're being attacked with a uh, a monster attack, but after landing back on the ground and you insert that mine, you and your friends can deal bonus damage by hitting the spot the mine is lodged into the monster. And... If the mine's on the face of the monster, oh boy, that's that's going to be a hammer users and a hunting horn users dream, and I'm very excited uh, to be messing with that. So combine, combine something like that, like I said, with a hammer or a hunting horn, watch out. I mean, this this thing's going to, you're that, the light bow gun plus hunting horn and hammer is just going to be KO City. But honestly, overall, the light bow gun just feels extremely well thought out and put together in this game, and honestly, I just cannot wait to use it in the full game. Under the next weapon I think I was really drawn to in Rise is probably the weapon that most people will probably start with if they've never played an MH title before. And that, of course, is the Sword and Shield. But man, what a great weapon for starters and experts alike. Once again, the Sword and Shield has its moveset from Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter Iceborne, of course, with a few changes added here and there. And let me just say, if you are playing Monster Hunter Rise for the first time or if you've never played Monster Hunter before and you're not used to playing the weapons... Let me just say, the Sword and Shield feels great in Rise, and you should definitely try it out if you haven't already. Once mastered, the SNS can deal out heavy combo damage, as well as elemental combo damage if used properly. While the weapon is drawn, you still move at a solid speed, with the ability to also guard incoming attacks with the smaller shield. This is the only weapon in the game as well that allows you to use items while keeping your weapon out. A weapon out simply by guarding and then pressing the item use button. While at first the SNS seems like it does light damage, it's in its special moves and wire bug moves where the SNS really shines. For starters, after any attack the sword and shield performs, uh, you can jump into a charged back hop, which does indeed get invincibility frames at the beginning of the hop. This back hop can actually be charged up to two stages, with the first stage being a lunging slash forward and the second stage being a heavy lunging jump, which if it lands, it sends the hunter upwards to perform a midair slash or a shield bash, uh, a shield bash downwards. However, in addition with, to the new rise moveset plus the wire bug, uh, the sword and shield also gets a plunging thrust downwards once you get launched in the air by hitting X and A as well. Uh, some of the combo strings on the sword and shield also allow you to follow up with shield bashes, making this a weapon that can not only cut monster tails, but also stun. 
Um, it is a very versatile weapon and a very good weapon in an extremely skilled player's hands. Of course, the bread and butter of the Sword and Shield comes from its very notorious but very powerful move, the Perfect Rush. This move is initiated by pressing X immediately when you start a back hop. It, and what it does, it is actually a timed series of slashes that gets stronger if you press the button with the timing ending after each attack, which ends in a launcher, which can be used into the plunging thrust, a slash, or a shield bash once again. The sequence can also be cancelled by dodging out of it or using a spinning reaper, which is your grounded X and A move. But be careful while committing to the perfect rush attacks, as they do indeed have the longest and slowest attack animation string of the sword and shield. But let me tell you, it is well worth it if you can find an opening to use it. Uh, and of course, while guarding, uh, the sword and shield also gets a new, uh, a new weapon known as a guard slash counter. Now, the Guard Slash is a move on the Sword and Shield that was rarely ever used. It was just a weak, pitiful slash um, that was used from behind the shield. But in Monster Hunter Rise, they actually gave it a guard point window. So, if you time this properly while guarding, if you press X, you'll slash from behind your shield, and you'll notice that a slight blue flare will briefly appear in front of the Hunter. That brief blue flare is the guard counter window. If it connects by pressing X or A again, you can launch yourself once again into a perfect rush combo. Unfortunately, the downside to this guard slash counter is that it does have a little bit of a downside. And the downside for this is that it only works on lightly damaging attacks. If you try and pull this counter off against, say, a Rathian Fireball, you'll actually just end up blocking it instead and not launch, launch yourself into the perfect rush. Instead, you will get knocked back. So adding maybe a skill like Guard Up on Sword and Shield might allow you to counter heavier attacks as well. So uh, keep that in mind when you when you definitely want to play Sword and Shield in the full game if Guard Up and Guard are, are skills. So it might be something you want to run. Um, unfortunately, this Guard Counter at the moment, uh, in the demo I said it's a very situational move. Uh, it has to be used with timing and precision, but it's, uh, as I said, it's incredibly useful if you can get it to work. The wire bug moves, however, I think for the Sword and Shield are extremely useful. For starters, the first wire bug move is called Falling Shadow. Falling Shadow is a wire bug launch forward that if it hits the monster, your character kicks off the monster into an aerial maneuver where you can do one of three attacks, which we've already gone over. One is, it, once again, a plunging shield bash, which does do wire bug damage for that new wyvern riding mechanic. The other... Uh, is an aerial slash, while the final one, once again, is a plunging stab. And something I didn't uh, get to mention about the plunging stab, but the plunging stab actually hits multiple times on its way down, um, so it might be pretty useful uh, for building up that, that new wyvern riding meter or, you know, even cutting off a tail. As for the other wire bug move, uh, it is called Windmill, and for those of us who played Monster Hunter Generations, this one is very familiar to us. It's basically the great round slash that the Sword and Shield had in Generations, and it, this is a move that not only deals the Wyvern Riding, uh, deals damage for Wyvern Riding and Wire Bug damage, but it hits multiple times and makes you invincible at the start of the activation. And because of this, honestly, the Sword and Shield has probably got some of the most generous iframe windows for some of its uh, attacks in the game. And it's honestly been one of the very, it's always been a very good staple weapon in the Monster Hunter series. And I'm so glad it got just as much uh, love and rise as well. As for my preferred heavy weapon in the demo, this time around, my preferred heavy weapon was none other, like I said, than the Switch Axe. And dear god, this thing is busted. <laughs> and I mean really busted in eyes. First things first, with the additions of the Wirebug, the Switch Axe has become stupidly mobile for how much damage it can now deal. Not only that, but it also got some new amazing changes while in its uh, while in the Switch Axe's amped state. For starters, the Switch Axe this time around benefits from being able to be used in Axe and Sword modes evenly. In World, by filling your amped mode gauge to the max, you'd be able to latch onto the monster and pump in a file burst to the monster you latched onto. But to balance this, in Rise, this time around, they've nerfed the rate at which you can fill your amped state gauge. However, you can refill it just as quickly by using the Wild Swing Power Slam, which is one of the uh, which is one of the 
switch axe as axe mode attacks to gain the world's amp recharge state back. Along with this amp state, it no longer just affects the sword mode on the switch axe, but also the axe mode as well, which is what it did not do in world, which is why you're going to benefit from playing both modes evenly, as both states will now be able to do switch axe file damage. It's wire bug moves, as I've already stated, give the switch axe even more mobility as well, allowing switch axe users to just pump out damage at a stupidly rapid rate. One of its wire bug attacks, known as Invincible Gambit, prevents you from flinching, although if you do get hit while, act oh, while doing this attack, you will still take damage from hit, although it is reduced damage. But uh, this attack, it launches you forward into a heavy axe slam, uh, which from there you can also switch into sword mode to build damage as well. As for the other wire bug move, it is known as the Switch Charger, and it is an evasive move which not only regens your switch gauge to stay in sword mode for the switch axe, but it also prevents that switch gauge from decreasing for a short time. And to me, the wire bug just makes this weapon as good as it can get. Uh, it, you added the, the stupid mobility, you added the amazing power of the damage in the switch axe, you allowed players to not only hunt freely in the axe mode, but also hunt freely in the sword mode. I think the switch axe is uh, probably undergone one of the best overhauls uh, out of the weapons, except the Hunting Horn. The Hunting Horn has the honor of getting the best overhaul for Rise, although they really kind of simplified it. I'm, I'm not too happy about it being super simplified, but, dude, the Hunting Horn is, is just amazing. But I'm not, unfortunately, not talking about the Hunting Horn. Uh, but um, this weapon, is, the Switch Axe itself, I mean, it's just crazy. And I can't wait to see how crazy it's going to get in the later stages of Rise when you can deal out just stupid amounts of damage. Well, for me, that just about covers the weapons uh, I will specifically be using in Rise. So, let's discuss um, some potential issues I had in the demo. Uh, well, actually, to be fair, there's really not one. There is one main issue, and that is the demo stuttering. You see, I initially streamed Monster Hunter Rise uh, over on my Twitch, and the first thing I noticed while in multiplayer was that every second or two, my game would stutter. Now, while I have a wired connection, and we determined it was not the wired connection, and we also determined that it wasn't me, uh, me streaming causing the problem. So, what really caused the problem? Well, oddly enough, it's because I had too many friends on my Switch. Yeah, you heard that right. The footage you've been seeing all video is from when I dropped my friends list down to a hundred people. Um, this to me is a is a scary problem. Now, normally Monster Hunter demos do have a little bit of a latency issue, so I'm hopeful that the game doesn't have this problem on full release. But the fact that having too many friends on your Nintendo Switch before when I streamed it, I probably had around 200 friends on my Switch. Um, the fact that that caused stuttering, it's something to do with how Nintendo Online interacts with multiplayer. And like I said, this is a very scary problem and I really hope um, Monster Hunter Rise does not suffer from this issue on full release. But the fact that it was caused by having too many friends on my friend list, that's, that's strange. I, 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 think that's, I think that's stupidly strange. Maybe it's something on Monster Hunter Rise's end. Maybe it has something to do, as I said, with good old $20 a year. Um, but regardless, I, this is, uh, that will definitely be a problem if that is present on full release. And I think that's definitely something that should be looked at. So I, I'm praying that, um, you know, the, the devs of Rise got the feedback, uh, from the demo from that. And hopefully they can adjust the issue as well. Cause it's definitely something that should be looked at. Of course, my friends and I still are very much looking forward to Monster Hunter Rise. And with only two months left until the release, the hype is continuing to build. I can't wait to see more trailers, more monsters, and more, more wire bug moves if they actually have more wire bug moves for the weapons. And I just I just can't wait for the release the release of this game. The demo has brought me so much joy for the future of where this series is going to go, and I love that free running mechanic. And of course I hope that you guys who are watching this video right now, I hope you'll pick it up for yourselves. And, you know, experience this new generation of Monster Hunter, this new movement-filled generation of Monster Hunter. And I hope you enjoy yourselves with it. But, unfortunately, with that being said, uh, I am actually all out of time for this video. I, this is, I have been probably doing a bunch of work for about 30 minutes now, and that's just recording this audio. Uh, I still have yet to go edit this video, but, um... 
I, I'll maybe leave a hunt in the background for you so y'all can watch it. Um, but if not, if I don't leave a hunt in the background of the video, I do hope you'll consider liking this video, of course, as well as hitting that subscribe button. But as always, before I go, I have to do, I have to thank my don donors over there on Patreon, Mickey Forjans, Thomas, and Stileno for their continued support of the channel. And until then, this is CIJMan777, signing off. Stay safe, everybody.